Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last summer, the Prime Minister claimed he wanted to protect free speech oh. and put a stop to no platforming. Oh. So, how concerned was he by last week's campaign by Tory MPs to cancel a broadcaster? Mr. Mr. Speaker, as I said said at the time, the issues between Gary Lineker and the BBC were for them to resolve, and I'm very glad glad that they did, and we look forward to watching Match of the Day again on our screens. Keir Starmer. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the the, the sight of them howling with rage over a tweet, signing green ink letters in their dozens, (laughs) desperately trying to cancel a football highlight show. That should have been laughable. Instead, it led to a farcical weekend, with the national broadcast being accused of dancing to the government's tune by its own employees. Rather than blame everyone else, why doesn't he take some responsibility, stand up to his snowflake MPs waging war on free speech? Mr Speaker, I, uh, Mr. Speaker, just the usual, usual political opportunism from the leader of the Labour Party. Because I don't, I don't know if he noticed. I don't know if he noticed, but actually, first the Shadow Attorney General and then the Shadow Home Secretary actually criticised the language that had been used in the tweet. But what a, but what a surprise! But what a surprise! What a surprise. He saw the chance to jump on a political bandwagon and changed his mind. Here's Starmer. So, Mr. Speaker, do I. I'm not being funny. I think our constituents want to get to the budget. The more that you showed, the more you progress questions. So, please, my constituents are interested if yours aren't. Here's Starmer. Mr. Speaker, they want more of a Prime Minister who doesn't understand. You can disagree with what somebody says, but still defend their right to say it. He doesn't understand that. We're in a real problem. Does he accept that people's concerns about the BBC have been made worse because the government chose to put a Tory donor with no broadcasting experience in charge of the BBC? Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, as, as he well knows, the BBC Chairman was appointed before I became Prime Minister. He was appointed... He was... He was appointed... And the same applies to this side. This budget matters to the people of this country. They won't hear it. Don't keep questions going longer than need be. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, there was a rigorous, independent and long-established process. That... That, that appointment was supported by expert panel members, as well as the cross, as well as the cross-party DCMS Select Committee. Now, that, it's right that process that process is being that process is being independently reviewed by the Office for Commissioner of Public Appointments, and we should allow that review to conclude. Dear Starmer, Mr. Speaker, the problem is the chair of the BBC isn't just any old Tory donor. No. He's so close to the Prime Minister. Order. Mr Fabricant, I want you to be in for the budget. Cup of teas don't want to come that early. Mr Speaker, he's no ordinary Tory donor. He's so close to the Prime Minister, he's been described as his mentor. He helped arrange an £800,000 credit line for the former Prime Minister. A minor detail he forgot to tell the Select Committee, which scrutinised his appointment. Does the Prime Minister think that his friend's position is still tenable? Well, Mr Speaker, as I've just said, the, office for in- the independent office for Commissioner of Public Appointments is reviewing what was a rigorous independent process to appoint the chairman. Instead of prejudging and preempting that review, we should let it conclude and wait for the outcome. That is the right way to do things, and that's what the government will do. Yeah.